I sense that Nooch is going to stack rank his roster. Greetings and hello there everyone, it's me, Nooch Too Good, your Star Wars dad, and today I am stack ranking the characters on my roster, the Star Wars dad roster, my free to play account that I've had for two and a half years. Top to bottom, bottom to top, we're gonna rank it. We do a little differently down here. We're not looking at E's and S's and A's and B's. We're looking at Poodoo, Trainees, Captains, Admirals, Grand Moffs, and Unlimited Power. We will work our way bottom to top to rank every single character on the roster. Before we do that, real quick though, let's jump in and, uh, and let's take a look at the actual roster itself. Here it is, top to bottom, you can see it. There's Fennec Shannon working at Oris Singh, Boba Fett, uh, Jedi Knight Revan, Bam, Bam, Darth Malgus, Grief Karga, Basilisk Shine. Let me get into like the lower tiers here. General Veers is gear 12. You got Zalbar in the 12s, Poggle, R2. We're getting down to gear 11, gear 8, gear 9s. We're scrolling down the screen right now all the way to the bottom. We're going to rank every single character that I have unlocked on this roster. We're going to have reasons. Uh, the reasons are the reasons. And yes, yeah, so there you go. Top to bottom, ranking every character on the roster. Now, if you would like to follow along, because I won't have my roster up in front of me, uh, my ally code is right there, 561-656-327. Go pull up my, my roster right now, go to your ally link. You saw me, you've seen me do roster reviews. Go to your allies, click, punch this ally code, 561-656-327. You can follow along with me from bottom to top as I stack rank every character on the, we're not doing shifts today, we'll do that down the road. Today is just characters, bottom to top, and let's go. We start off with a Poodoo tier. The Poodoo tier has several Wookiees on it. We got Resistance, we've got some Night Sisters. Uh, some Sith down there, uh, etc., etc. On down, it's a little black, a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything. So, what's going on with this Poodoo level? These are all the characters that I've just, I've got at like level one. I don't use them for anything. Pretty much any character that's sitting on my roster and not used is down here. So we've got Vandor Chewy, Clone Wars Chewy, uh, Resistance Hero. Che no, not Resistance Hero. Sorry. Um, Veteran Smuggler Chewy, that's who's at the bottom of this roster, along with a bunch of, I have I've not upgraded Resistance ever, I've not bothered to work on those guys. We got a couple of Night Sister Initiate, Night Sister Acolyte, I think they're down there for most of you guys, they're just not, a, they're just not very useful characters. We got, uh, yeah, you've got Triple O and BT1, I don't, I don't use them at all. Uh, the only thing I have done with them, I upgraded them to like Gear 7, I think, just to throw into Conquest to get myself some rewards in there. Uh, hey, there's Embo. I've got to get Embo up. I'm working on Jabba right now, and Embo is going to be a real priority for me in the coming months. So Embo will be upgraded soon uh, down there at the bottom. Royal Guard. Here's all the Empire that I haven't touched, and that's a lot of a lot of folks that go really on Iden Versio's team that I haven't upgraded it because it doesn't really lead anywhere. I like Iden Versio. I like the team. It's kind of fun. It just doesn't really take me <clears throat> forward to any other characters, you know? Uh, for sure, Darth Talon is somebody I, I'm going to be leveling up. After I finish off my current Jabba, Jedi Master Luke, Profunity, and I think I'll probably get Leviathan. Once I finish that off, it's going to be moving into Starkiller time. I'd love to have Darth, Darth Talon just there to throw on like a, that uh, the Darth Treya plus Savage Opress team. That'd be a lot of fun. Some Inquisitors there, some Sith, etc. You can tell I don't have Sith Eternal because I've got Darth Sidious down there at the bottom. Uh, there's my Rogue One. I don't, I don't have Profunity, but at some point I'll get them up as well. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Ahsoka, Ahsoka Fulcrum, we've got Tebow, we got a couple of Ewoks down there, the Hoth Rebel Scout, Hoth Rebel Soldier down there at the bottom. Once I get Mon Mothma up, I'll need to do Scout to, to go along with that. And that, that also Powell and the Rogue want to go with that. And there you've got Ugnot, uh, I think Cup, yeah, Cup, IG-86, um, we've got, uh, uh Luminar Unduli, Eeth Koth, you know, the typical Drek at the bottom of your roster. And that is, that wraps up our Poodoo review. There is the Poodoo level. Let's move up to trainees, folks. Let's see who our trainees are. We got our Bad Batch and trainees. We got Wedge. We've got uh, Rolo is in there. Oh, that'll be an improvement. A bunch of Rebels. A bunch of Rebels. Some Java requirements are in there as well. The Phoenix are in there. Well, we all know that just changed. We got L3. We've got, uh, we've got the Super Imperial Commando, Gar Saxon, some Empire. We got uh, Marin is down there, and some Tuscans and, and Admiral Rattus. Let's talk about this one a little bit. 
The Bad Batch were a step above Poodoo because even though they're low gear, I do have Wrecker actually at seven stars and gear eight, I think, because he, uh, Wrecker's Node, you farm something else. Let me know in comments. I can't remember what you farm in Wrecker's Node. I probably can look it up while we're talking. Um, Wrecker's Node also farms, well, this is taking me, I don't know. When you farm something else, you get Wrecker. And I, pull, I got it pulled up right now. Um, I think it's a ship. Yeah, when you farm Galactic Republic Y-Wing, you get Wrecker. So that's why I've got Wrecker at seven stars. He's gear seven. You know, I can throw them into a Galactic Challenge every now and they hold their water, but they're just there to get me some rewards and nothing else. Rolo is definitely on the slate to be upgraded very soon. She's part of the Jabba, the Jedi Knight Luke journey, and I'll be getting her done. All these other Rebels, too. Wedge, uh, well, not all of them. <laughs> not, uh, not all of them. <laughs> some of them. Wedge, uh, Lando, Mon Mothma, uh, uh, Captain Han Solo, Old Ben. These guys are going to be needed for Jedi Knight Luke and Jedi Master Luke events. You all get those guys. There's Gamorrean Guard and Greedo. Needed for Jabba. That's why That's why they're not very good on my roster, but I got them a step above Poodoo because I need them for Jabba, and I'm working on them right now. See some older public down there. Um, there's my Phoenix. Hoda, same thing. Uh, Hermit Yoda we're working on right now for Jedi Knight Luke. We'll get him up. Uh, Mob Enforcer, same story right there. There's Dash Rendar and L3. I would like to get that, and they don't go together, by the way. I don't know why I said not L3, T3. Uh, Dash Rendar, T3's in there. Uh, you know, my older public, I don't, I don't T3, and I don't see myself doing um, uh, my older public guys down here anytime soon. The Phoenix, I don't know. I just, this stuff is so far off for me. I, Dash Rendar, again, will fit into that. Farm. I don't know why I ranked him above. Maybe it's because he's got the ship that I need to go get Jabba. Um, you know, there's L3 right there. There's your uh, Quill and your Empire. Kyle Katarn. I know Kyle Katarn's really great. I know he has a good ship. I know that Starkiller will be on my roster sometime next year. But right now, he's just no good. There's my Tuscan. I did upgrade the Tuscan a little bit for uh, for a Galactic Challenge just to get some rewards. But that was it. Admiral Radish, you see down there, I'll be working on him for Profundity after I finish Jabba. Marin is just somebody that's at three stars and I haven't farmed at all yet. Dooku's down there. That's my trainee level. Let's move up to the next level here, folks. It's going to be your captains. Your captains are speaking. You can see, oh, what do we have? Lobot, Smuggler, Han, uh, Cody, Lowgrade, some weird choices there. And J Jawas, Jedi Counselor. This is going to be an interesting level. Let's pull it up and take a little closer look here. The reason I have... Lobot, uh, Veteran Smuggler, Han, Cody, and Logre here is because they're all Relic characters. I Relic Logre and Lobot for Rise of the Empire Territory Battles. Cody was for Jedi Master Kenobi, and Smuggler Han was for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. So the reason that they are sitting up here in Captains is simply because they are Relic, and I cannot, I cannot find a way to put a Relic character down in the bottom levels. It just doesn't fit. I don't use these guys. I, well, Logre... Excuse me, I use Logray from time to time. Lobot does not get used, although I did have one little quick... I did use Lobot once to clean up a team. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Smuggler Han doesn't get used. I use him in the in the uh, Smuggler's Run. You know, it comes out. Whatever. Cody, I really don't use Cody. There's my Jabba's. I told you guys it's my passion project right now. I'm kind of working on getting my Jabba's up there. I'm going to get them all to gear 12. I'm not taking them above gear 12. Just to use them to create Dragon Raid. Throw them on defense and see if we can make something good happen. Jedi Counselor is there because I do use his ship. And there's a lot of characters, I think, in this level that I use their ship or their ships are usable. And so they moved up a level from below. So he's not really upgraded much. But his, his Starfighter actually does fit into several lineups that I use, including the, um, the Finalizer counter to executor you can use them in there just to recover some protection so that's it akbar and and biggs i have been known to use akbar's home one with biggs out there his ship there's their ships again for a cleanup here and there ewoks i can use for a cleanup i throw on defense and they're not you know uh, they're, they're all gear 11 so i can get 3po i think i've actually got them at gear 12 so they don't belong i think i did them to gear 12 when i when the chirpa omicron came out i upgraded to gear 12 i put that omicron on and have regretted it ever since but yeah so they belong in captains as well r2 is not you know he's upgraded as uh, tarkin same thing this ship mara jade i actually have her tw omicron on her and i put that team out there for tw even though she's only three stars gear 10 or 11 so that's why she moves up a level i don't use her a lot a lot of you guys yell at me for that i know i know i need to get on my mara jade just so many priorities in the game uh, there you see Thrawn, and you see Aiden Versio. Again, ships come into play. I do sometimes throw Thrawn in there just to try to get a fracture. 
I just I put her on defense, but she doesn't do much. She's not very high gear. But her ship, you know, the tie intercept tie defender. I use the tie defender to clean up a lot of fleets. So that's that's a good one there. Night sisters, you see, uh, you see. Mother Towson and Zombie and Talia down here in the Captains. They are, and Spirit, you know, they're all like gear 11, 12 in the range just for the assault battle. They don't really carry the team, but they hold me together for the assault battle so I can get it done. You can, you're missing two people there. You'll see them here soon. Uh, I've got my Old Republic again. Zalbar, Mission. You know, Zalbar and Mission are actually going to my Crate Dragon raid, so I actually use them a fair amount in Crate Dragon, but really for nothing else. More Old Republic and Sith Empire. The reason I got him down here, HK sometimes fits in. Now that I've got Darth Malgus, he doesn't really fit anywhere on my roster except a random cleanup team every now and then. He's gear 12. This doesn't do it. And the same thing for Candorous Ordo. I do put him into a Crate Dragon Raid team. He fits in there. He's low gear, though. He doesn't do a lot of damage. And then at the end, you're, well, Kira, you know, Smugglers Run again or... Um, I use her as a, a nest lead, although I've kind of defaulted to Farm Boy Luke for nest lead a lot here recently. Bear Sophie, I just like Bear Sophie. I wish I had more uses for her. I probably, if I relic her, I could put her on that Padme team. I still just feel like she's kind of missing, uh, she's kind of missing something where she used to be like, she was a meta character for a, several years in the game, two, three years, and now she just kind of has faded over time. And there you see all my jobber requirements that I haven't leveled up yet. Skiffguard Lando, Kersantan, Boosh Leia, uh, we got we got everybody in here. These guys, I'm working on them. They're going to be moving up the ladders. I just have, and I need to figure out how to use them. As I level them up, I need to figure out how to use them. They'll be moving up the tiers, but right now they sit in captains. Let's take a move forward to our admirals. Admiral, you are in command now, Admiral. I sound like a little like Zareth there. Uh, anyway, we got my Geos there. We some of our Imperial troopers. Some other guys that do ships. We got a bunch of our separatist droids in there. Some more Night Sisters as well. The First Order secondary teams. Let's pull this thing up and take a quick, close look at it. There's your Geos right off the bat. I really like my Geos. I know there's a lot of back and forth in the back. My Geos are all gear 12. I always, I'm in a Rhodium 2. I always use them on offense in Grand Arena. They're always there for use. I get a lot of use out of my Geos on offense and gear 12 Geos. They can overcome a lot of Relic teams. They do a great job for me. I really, really, really like the Geos. Even at this point in the game, they're a lot of fun. Plo Koon is down there simply for one reason, one reason only. I need a drink. Ah, Plo Koon is down there only for his ship. His ship is so important. Him as a character is useless, but his ship is so important to the Galactic Republic fleet with Negotiator that he gets into Admirals right there, right off the bat, just because of his ship. Colonel Stark and Range Trooper, they're kind of interchangeable. Probably Range Trooper is a little bit better on that Imperial Trooper team. I have both at Gear 12. They fit here in Admirals. They don't really go anywhere else. I throw them into some Empire teams now and then, but you know. Clone Sergeant. Same thing, the ship. He's there because of his ship. It's it's not as integral as Plo Koon, but it can be a really important piece in your negotiator fleet. Uh, Mace Windu is there. Mace Windu fits into a Padme team, uh, you know, as the tank, and he's he's really improved. You know, when they really reworked Mace Windu here a while ago, he was a useless, useless character for a long, long time. And he's now he's very useful. He fits right in that Padme team as the tank, since General Kenobi now goes on my Jedi Master Kenobi team. Uh, my, my four separatist droids, I don't have Grievous here, but these four sep droids, they're all Relic 5. I've only got them down here in Admiral because they kind of only fit in one place, and they don't do a lot outside of being on a Grievous team. So I like them. I like them a lot. I just kind of throw on the Grievous team and forget about it. That's where they fit right here in Admirals. Uh, let's see. None of them have ships or anything either, so they just fall in there. Shock T. You know, same thing. She's a great character, great plug and play for a Padme team, a Gen Jedi Master Kenobi team. No ship or anything, but she's a really, really good character. A clone lead if you use gas somewhere else. There's my two Night Sisters. These, these guys are Relic Daka and Asajj are Relic. I reliced up Asajj back during the gas event. Probably didn't need to. Uh, but Daka, I relic up for the assault battle, and she carries the Daka carries that assault battle through challenge tier one for me. I haven't really worked on Challenge Tier 2. I probably need to get more Relics in that team, and I just haven't bothered with it. But that's they fall up on Admirals because they do carry that Assault Battle for sure. We can see there are some Bounty Hunters. Grief, uh, Zam, and Django Fett. You know, Django... I wish Django had an... I wish we had a second version of the Slave 1, like Django's Slave 1. That'd be really cool in-game, but we don't. These guys, I kind of plug around a lot. 
you know, Zam fits into a Grand Arena Bounty Hunter team, but nowhere else. Like, she's really useless in every other game mode. So, you know, somebody that's only in one game mode, I really, unless they're just amazing at it, she's really good in Grand Arena. Really good, not amazing. So, she fits in Admirals. Grief is a plug and play. I like Grief a lot. Some of you guys are probably going to have some grief with me about this. But, you know, Admirals for me, I, I'm... I'm still working through my bounty hunters, and as I farm Jabba, I'm going to farm up a lot more bounty hunters. I need to get more familiar with how multiple bounty hunter teams work. I've just used that boss team for so long, and I'm starting to get, I've got Mando now, I've got, I've got like eight bounty hunters relics right now, and I don't know how to put those teams together, and that includes Django as well. There's my secondary first order team. You know, it fits both in territory battles, uh, excuse me, territory war and Grand Arena. You know, Phasma's Omicron goes in Territory War. First Order Type Pilot's Omicron goes in Grand Arena. I like using this team a lot in both those game modes. They're really good, especially with those Omicrons built in. I love First Order Type Pilot's Omicron a lot. Just some really good stuff. You mix that in there with a good Datacron and some... It can make that team pretty challenging to deal with. Uh, Imperial Type Pilot's area, his ship is needed for for uh, for the Executor, and he is Relic. Bo-Katana's Relic. I use her for my Crate Dragon Raid. Um, you know, uh, uh, Isla Sakura, I've got her relic for Jedi Master Kenobi. I actually get some use out of her in Conquest. I love getting those data discs where I add, you know, 50% offense and, uh, 50% offense. I think it's just 50% offense and something. No, 50% offense to, uh, allied healers and support. She's a support. She actually kind of hits like a truck in Conquest. When you put her into that Jedi Master Kenobi team or Padme team, she can really do a lot of damage. So I got her there because I really like her in Conquest. There's my 500 first. Rex, Arc Trooper, Echo, you guys yell at me about it all the time. Feel free to yell at me again. They're gear 12. I'm working on it. They are my next relics. I will have them relic uh, by mm, uh, maybe the first week of July. Arc Trooper is almost there. The other two I'll get there. I'm not relicking anything else until I get these three guys relicked on the roster. They're in Admirals only because they're gear 12. When they are relic, they will move up a notch to Grand Moffs. Sith Marauder, I really like. He's got the ship coming up for Leviathan, too. He's a great guy to plug into that Darth Malgus team or a Sith Empire team in general. Scion, you're going to see one... Well, you see the Sith Triumvir is going to come up, come up one character at a time. Scion is the lowest one on there for me. He's the tank. He does good. He does a good job. He does good. <laughs> he does a good job as a tank. He's fine. I like him. I have no problem with him. He doesn't really get me excited, so he falls in this Admiral tier, but he's a really good character, and he's really important on that Sith Triumvirate team. Next, we go to our Grand Moff. You can see it thinning out as we go up. It's thinning out. I'm a believer in, you know, and I used to make this, I used to make this when I did LEGO Star Wars Battles. It was a diamond, so at the top was like one or two characters. In the middle was a bunch. At the bottom was one or two characters. It didn't really make sense to do... For Galaxy of Heroes, I have a lot of Pudu and a lot of trainees I need to put at the bottom of this. So anyway, but it does thin out as we move up to the top. Let's take a look at these Grand Moffs. There you go. I just told you the Sith Triumvirate's going to be one piece by piece. Nihilus is awesome, dude. Nihilus is awesome. He does a amazing work with that Sith Triumvirate with Treya's Omicron. Other game modes, you use Nih Nihilus with, uh, with Treya when you get over to Proving Grounds. He's just a monster. I love this guy. He's really great. There's my older public team, Jedi Knight Revan, Jolie Bindo, Bastilishan, and Yoda. You guys have watched me use that team over and over and over and over again in Grand Arena. Uh, I don't really use it in territory battles anymore, but territory wars, con it fits into all sorts of game modes for me. Those four right there, plug in another Jedi and you're good to go. I love these guys. There are my uh, two of my Imperial Troopers, Veers, who is the lead. And there's Gideon, who sucks all the turn meter away from the other team, reduces their damage. These two are amazing. They fall into the Grand Moff tier. They're not quite at that unlimited power tier, but I love my Veers. I love my Gideon. They're both gear 12, by the way, but a gear 12 with uh, Relic other character with Relic a couple other characters you'll see in a minute in unlimited power. They really do a lot of work. Darth Vader, I love. I can't put him into unlimited power. He just... He is limited at this point of the game. You know, they'll put Datacrons out there every now and then. You'll be able to use it for him. But he needs like a, I don't know, he needs a Grand Arena Omicron or a, uh, just an Omicron that applies to all game modes or TW and, and Grand Arena. I don't know. He needs something at this point of the game. They nerfed him in 2020 because he would have been just too powerful with Lord Vader. Now he needs to be buffed. I don't see them buffing the characters anytime soon, but that's what we need. Hey, we've got some more, some more, we get some more first order characters. 
We got more first order characters. First order Stormtrooper, Sith Trooper, and uh, OG Kylo. Hey, those first two really make the uh, the Supreme Leader Kylo team just hum, make it go brr. So, I, you know, Sith Trooper is great. First order Stormtrooper, that secondary tank on that team. They also uh, go out there for their ships, the TIE Dorito and Kylo shuttle, they're really important. OG Kylo on Kylo's shuttle. And I'm using that finalizer fleet. I still use it to counter Executor to this day. And he does still. In Erodium 2, I do find solo battles for him from time to time. And I have a lot of fun using him. I really like OG Kylo as a character. Uh, I guess we could probably use a buff or something out there in the game. I'd love to see a First Order Datacron. Give me something there. I guess they had one a while ago. But hey, Padme and Fives are here. Uh, there's some, there's just some Galactic Republic here. Padme... Fives is a, is Relic 3, that's why he moves, he's a little higher than my other first, or my other 500 first. So, did I say Padme? I meant Fives. I don't know what I said. Fives is Relic 3. So he's a tier above the other 500 first. He falls in there. Uh, he really, you know, his sacrifice does a lot for the rest of those guys. Padme, you know, I don't really use her much in Grand Arena anymore, but Territory Battles, Territory War, Conquest, Galactic Challenges... She, uh, Proving Grounds. She is a monster in Proving Grounds, guys. She dominates Proving Grounds. So I would, uh, yeah, I would definitely encourage you dial in on Padme. She is amazing. She's really good. Uh, you know, it, I think she does like the first, she does the Razor Crest level, the Cat level, and the Maul level. And I've even seen her, a team of hers, do another level as well. Can't remember what it was. Come back on Monday. I'll have more for you on that. Savage Press. I realize a lot of you put him, put him in unlimited power. I'm still figuring him out, and I'm working on it. I've got him at Relic 3. He's going to go to Relic 5 uh, with his Omicron, and he's a solo artist. I'm still working on... on. I need to do more work to figure out what he what he does, where he fits. I have ended up... Just a little burp there, sorry. I've ended up throwing... <laughs> I've ended up throwing him... Hang on. I've thrown him on... Treya teams a lot. Treya, Omicron, and Savage there as the tank. Kind of double tanking with uh, Scion. I need to find more ways to use him solo, and I'll be looking for those in the game coming up. Hey, uh, Emphis Nest, you guys know, every every Grand Arena, I look for a way to use Emphis Nest. I probably find a way to solo teams with her. I put Farm Boy Luke or Kira in charge, you know, as the leader. Give her a little, little bit of, you know, either tenacity or offense, but always looking for a solo for Emphis Nest. That Mon Mothma team, uh, you know, the OG Mon Mothma team with Biggs and Wedge is kind of low-hanging fruit for Emphis Nest for sure. Hey, Ahsoka, man. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn right there with his Omicron. You guys know I love that thing with Anakin. Ahsoka down there with her ship. She fits into the Jedi Master Kenobi team, the Padme team. She can fit into a Qui-Gon Jinn. Oh, she fits everywhere. Ahsoka is certainly not lacking in this game. She fits all over the place. Uh, there you go. There's there's Grievous. Why does Grievous come above the other separatist droids? He's got his own ship. You know, he's got the um, he's the captain of the Malevolence, and that's really really important to my roster. It's the Malevolence, and I forgot to mention that with the Geos, they're in that fleet too. But you know, that Malevolence counters a lot of stuff for me. I bring it. It, it is my second offensive fleet I use in Grand Arena, and it does a lot for me. And there is IG88, Cad Bane, Beskar Mando, and uh, Dengar. The four of them fit in because they are there as part of the Executor Farm. And three of them, IG88, Bam, and Cad Bane, are the ships. And right now, that is my meta fleet I'm using. I use those three. You know, they're really important. I've actually got Cad Bane, I think, at Relic 7 on my roster. And Bam, I think, is Relic 5 or 6. So they're really, you know, and those two are, you know, a lot of people don't have them as those high relics. So I have a lot of success with those guys. I love them. Basil is Sean Fallen. She rounds out that Sith Empire team, however you do it. You know, she is an important cog in that wheel. Uh, Mandalorian, I just got Mando relic, and I'm starting to use him, and I'm enjoying it. We're going to have a lot of fun with Mando in the coming days and weeks uh, in Grand Arena, having a blast with him. Palpatine, not unlimited power, but he really makes that Empire team and that Vader team go. You put him in there. And man, all the turn meter gain, all the extra stuff he grants, all the stuns, all of the shocks. Palpatine is kind of a monster in the game if you put him on the right team. I really love him as a leader. I love him as a character. He's a lot of fun. He falls in the Grand Moffs. And finally, finally we unveil unlimited power. Here we go. Let's take a look at the top of the food chain. Boys and girls, Jedi Master Kenobi. 
I have not regretted unlocking this guy for one minute. And you can see his little counterpart down there, Commander Ahsoka, down to the right. She is a monster as well. This team counters everything. It does so much work for me. Defense, offense, every game mode. Jedi Master Kenobi, I'm loving him. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren was how this account started. I started this account as a Supreme Leader Kylo Ren rush. You can go watch the playlist. You can go watch all the videos. There's a ton of Star Wars Dad cringe in there from the very beginning of the channel. But Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, I he still tends to be my most favorite character in the game. I love this guy. I love offense in general. I love crushing things, I love bruising things, and he just stacks and stacks and stacks and blows people away. I love Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. He is my favorite. Gas, need, to, need we argue about this? Gas with a bunch of gear 12, 500 first. Does so much work on my roster, it's really astonishing. I, I can do solos with him. He's Relic 7. I've only got him at 7. He is a machine. I love Gas. He's just a great, great character all around. I don't know what else to say about him. He's just a monster. We get into our Imperial Troopers. Dark Trooper and Piet. Now, if I had a second favoritist character in the game from Kylo Ren, maybe even a first, it would be Dark Trooper. I love Dark Trooper. I just love when he gets off a shot. I love that he can go in on like... Let's say you had a full health and protection relic. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, secondary character like Captain Han Solo. He can one-shot that dude in the right situation. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So I love Dark Trooper, and I love Piet making that Imperial Trooper team hum. Imperial Trooper team is right up there. It's one of my two favorite teams in the game. You'll see my other favorite team here in a second. I love all of the assists, all the fun, the turn meter. I love how that team works. And of course, he pilots the executor, which is my capital ship, as I mentioned before. Hey, Hux. Some of you don't think Hux belongs here. As a leader for First Order, I don't end up using him that often because he slides into Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's team almost every time. But I use the finalizer to counter the executor in almost every round of Grand Arena. And I have about an 80 to 90% success rate with it. And Hux leads that fleet. And that's why I got him here. He comes into unlimited power because he is the uber mensch, the director of the finalizer fleet. I don't care what they did to him in the movies. I love my finalizer fleet and that's why he's there. Hey, Wampa guys, you know I love Wampa. You know I love my Wampa. I have wampa Gas, I have wampa Shock T, I have wampa any number of other teams all of the time. I'm always trying to find a new team I can kill. I can kill with Wampa and I find them all the time. It's a 3v3 Gas, by the way. I don't think 5v5 it works, but Wampa is amazing. And I've heard that he fades when you get up to Kyber, but I don't think so. You, I think people just aren't looking for ways to use Wampa. Maybe at the very top of Kyber, the top 100 players in the game, they put in like an anti-Wampa into every team. Okay, fine, he cleans up. But you know what? That still leaves 99.999% of us to enjoy the glory that is Wampa in Grand Arena. And by the way, I use him in rote territory battles, and he actually does some work in there. I use him in territory wars. I use him in, I use him in every game mode. At Relic 5, where I have him, he is an effective character in every game mode. Really fits in well with Darth Vader with all the dots. I like Wampa. Hey, Bosk. From the beginning to the end, I say it all the time, Bosk is one of the most important characters in the game, along with his ship, the Houndstooth. To this date, from the day it was released to this date, it is the best tank and possibly the best ship in the game. The Houndstooth is an amazing ship. Bosk is, an, is a good character, a really good character leading those bounty hunter teams. He can really do a lot of stuff. Even against Galactic Legends, you put him in there with, uh, with Mando, and Mando's disintegrating characters, clearing off everybody around so that somebody else can come clean up the Galactic Legend. Bosk is a great character. His Houndstooth is still, you know, the meta tank or individual uh, ship in the game. You see it here, guys. Imperial Troopers and Commander Luke Skywalker are my two favorite teams in the game. I love all the assists. I love the way the teams work. I love the mechanics of all the damage that these guys do. I told you I'm a damage guy. 
You can see a lot of that reflected here. I just love the fact that CLS comes out. Yeah, there's debuffs, yeah, there's stuns, but what they're really about is everybody assisting, everybody working together and doing a truckload of damage to the opposition. I love this team. And I could not separate any of them out. You know, when you put the five of them together, it's this amazing, this amazing confluence of rebel beauty and grace and destruction that I love so much. And I can't take any of them out. I can't take any of them out. So I put them all in Grand Moffs because I love this team. I love that team so much. Let's keep going here. Hey, there's Watt Tambor all by my sick youth. You know, I plug and play him the most into Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. If I want to counter another Galactic Legend with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, a lot of times I'll put Watt in there with his uh, protection tech, his tank tech. That keeps Kylo uh, clean of debuffs. That's the main thing. Yeah, it restores his protection, which is nice, but it cleans off the debuffs. So facing like a Jedi Master Luke, if you got a chance there, you have to have that tank tech on Supreme Leader Kylo Ren to get rid of the ability block so that he can have a chance. I just watch a great plug and play character in the game. He really is. He fits at the top of this tier, and that's why he is a Grand Moth. Kylo Ren Unmasked. Some of you were kind of shaking your head on that, wondering, Kylo Ren Unmasked, I mean, that's like, you know, what are we, 2017 here? Hey, man, I'm just saying, I, I, I love Kylo Ren Unmasked. He fits on that Supreme Leader Kylo Ren team every time. They go together. They go together in assault battles. They go together in just teaming up on every game mode. They go together. Kylo Ren Unmasked does all the tanking. For my money, I'm trying to think, is there a better tank? Is there a better pure tank? Like, if you, have, if you have Kylo Ren unmasked in the game, I like General Kenobi under Jedi Master. I just like Kylo Ren unmasked a lot. And by the way, TIE Silencer is my favorite ship. I, that thing, I, it, you know why? You know why? Because it stacks offense and it crushes people. Within three or four turns, when I'm doing my finalizer counter to the executor, within three or four turns, I'm one-shotting Boba Fett. I'm one-shotting IG-2000. He just does great work. I love the TIE Silencer. I love Kylo Ren Unmasked. I love looking at people's Kylo Ren Unmasked mods. Before you get Spring there, Kylo Ren, he's a very effective leader, you know, in that early and mid-game Grand Arena. He does a lot of work in territory battles, in every game mode. I love Kylo Ren Unmasked. Next, you see my three Sith Empire guys, Darth Malgus, Darth Revan, uh, Darth Malak. You know, Revan and Malak are now really important for Leviathan. But they're just great characters. These three are just, you know, top of top tier characters. It's why I get so upset when I see people that are early in mid game that have unlocked Darth Revan, unlocked Darth Malak, and not bothered to gear them up. I just, it just really bothers me so much because they're so good. These are end game characters that do so much, and I'm really enjoying Darth Malgus on offense right now. You know, I don't like to put a lot of beef on my defense because I usually play, face people with, you know. I got two GLs. I'm usually facing people with four or five. Uh, so I got to keep my guys for offense. Malgus on offense, man. That true damage that he does, I, I've one-shotted. I've complete one-shotted. I can't remember who. You know, not like, you know, tanks or anything, but characters that were really important to the other team, he has one-shotted them. And I got, I'm really enjoying Malgus a lot. So these, these guys are really, really important to your roster. Hey, uh, Boba Fett. We love Boba. You know, Boba Fett for years in this game was just kind of a just kind of there. There for credit heist and really nothing else. He wasn't very good. Then with um with I don't know if he ever got I don't know if he ever really got a rework. Did he get a rework? I think they maybe made his missile. No, I don't know. I don't know if he's ever had a rework. But now with the Slave One being such an important ship in the Executor, and now with I guess I guess what's happened is bounty hunters have improved around him, and that makes him a lot better. So now Boba Fett slipping into almost any bounty hunter team, you launch that rocket, it's almost as good in the right situation as a Mando as a Mando disintegrates. So I'm loving Boba Fett. I love his ship. It comes in and, and really cleans up. You know the Slave One comes in and it's the last ship to come in. It does all the cleanup work for the executive man. It's a really, really great ship. They were looking at uh, General Kenobi there. He's a plug and play tank, fits everywhere. Jedi Master Kenobi, Padme. You can even throw him into other rosters as well. He's just a great tank. He also runs the Negotiator, so it's really important on my roster. That's my second or third best fleet. You know, I've got Executor, Negotiator, Malevolence. Those are my guys that I'm running. Yes, yeah, some of you guys are going to argue for Chimera and Executrix. That's fine. I don't really have all those fleets up to snuff right now, but I do have Negotiator up, and that's where General, General Kenobi fits. 
Jenna and I, Anakin, I love my Qui-Gon Omicron. I really do. It's one of my favorite pieces in the game. I love going in with Jenna and Anakin in Grand Arena and just one-shotting an entire other team. It's one of the simple pleasures. It's up there with Commander Luke Skywalker when it works right. When it fails, it's super disappointing. <laughs> and finally rounding it out, the final uh, member of our Sith Triumvirate squad, Darth Treya. She fits really awesome. I mean, she, her, her, uh, her Datacron, her Omicron, I get it wrong every time. Her Omicron is amazing in Grand Arena. She also is great in Proving Ground. She's great in every game mode. Isolate is a tremendous, uh, a tremendous tool on any team. She just counters so many teams. She fits in the Sith team. She is a plug and play character, but her Sith Triumvirate can also just do some work all over the place, especially in Grand Arena. And that's what we're looking at right there. That is the entire ranking, boys and girls. There we go. You're looking at it right now. From Pudu to trainees to captains to admirals to grand moths to unlimited power. I hope you were following along, looking at my roster along the way. I hope you enjoyed this, boys and girls. There's my stack ranked roster. I'll come back here in a few weeks and I'll stack rank all the ships on my roster. But this is where we sit today on the Star Wars Dad free to play roster in two and a half years. I will talk to everyone very soon. Have a great day and always remember Nooch too good.